My guest today is an incredible musician and one of the founding members of one of the greatest bands of all time, Genesis. I'm very excited to welcome Anthony Phillips. Hi there, Mr. Phillips. Hello there. How do I pronounce your name? Oh, it's Roy. I Sorry, I, it always causes some confusion. Well, no, I think it's delightful because you've uh, actually got more, I've, you've worked out, you've got more vowels in your name. <laughs> that's, exact, that. that's exactly right. That's, that's, that's funny. Doing that. you, you, the, vowels are, that, the vowels are winning hand down with five three. <laughs> that's right. Nice of you to notice. Well, uh, I, I should ask you, I mean, I know, I know I've seen your name written before as Ant. I know some people call you that, but I, I should I call you Anthony? What do you prefer? I really don't mind. Uh, I, I'm, some people call me Ant. Some people call, call me Anthony. I, I mean, call me Ant if you like, because it's shorter. <laughs> Not either way. Um, it's a real honor to uh, to speak with you. Uh, obviously, I mean, doing what I do, it, it all starts with with your band Genesis, and and that's a huge uh, influence for me, and and one of the best bands ever, in my opinion. So, uh, yeah. chance to speak with you is is amazing. Thank you so much. Well, no, thanks. I'm I'm very happy to talk to you. So, are you? I, I do you embrace some of the other prog bands as well? Or are you are you mostly a Genesis fan? Uh, no, actually, I uh, the reason I started the the website and, and doing what I do is exactly that to promote the newer other bands that have kept the music going. Well, well which, done. Um, which I'm a big fan of, and I think that the you know I try to to uh, all the fans that well I have a good friend who only listens to Genesis. Actually, that's the only band he he likes. And, uh, which is great. I mean, nothing wrong with that, but I think you're missing out if, if you know, there's a lot of other great bands that are... So is there a neo prog? Uh, <laughs> it's, quite, it's quite, I mean, it's still fairly small, but there's a definite upsurge here with people like Stephen Wilson. Is there a sort of neo prog thing in the US which would be at all similar, would you say? No, prog is very, um, it, it's, it's beneath the underground, as, the, as, <laughs> as you might, uh, as you would imagine here. Um, subterranean possibly yeah exactly i'm hearing some music is there music in the background i'm playing my tenor ukulele very quietly in the background i'm sorry okay no no problem well i'm glad that uh you know uh uh billy uh brought me uh to the reissue of your uh, slow dance uh album and and right. i had a chance to uh to check that out, and I wanted to ask you a little bit about that because I know that's what you're you're currently promoting right now. Um, cool. You know, what was the? Uh, well, take me back to the original working on the album. It's a, I mean, it's largely orchestral and and a, a ton of other instruments outside of guitar and and uh, you know, what was the reason for writing that album and how did it come together at that time? Well, it was the first time I'd had a chance to do something kind of big because I'd done. Um, you know, Geese the Ghost, which was instrumental, a few songs. Then there was the the out the so sort of the two song albums were particularly on the second one with the advent of punk and disco. We were all being terribly pressured to do short songs, and so I had to sort of turn my back on the kind of longer kind of instrumental thing on the Geese the Ghost, which I which I loved. I mean, I didn't not enjoy what I was doing, but I wouldn't say I enjoyed it as much. I thought I was slightly going backwards in some respect. Then, with 1984, I was able to work. On a, on, again, on a slight, uh, yeah, staying on a sort of bigger camps, although it was a home album. But then during the 80s, things were quite tough here, actually. I mean, if you were established, you were okay. But, you know, uh, anyone in that sort of genre was getting terrible flack from the, I think, more, much more so than in any other country. Um, yeah. And, um, you know, the press were possibly beastly uh, about Genesis and all sorts of uh, uh, and other bands at that time. It really was knives in the back. I mean, it got... It sort of started to get better later, but um, so I found that that period was quite tough for me. I was doing simple albums. It was only at the end of the eighties I got a chance to do a, a. With ironically, it was because of the new age upturn. I mean, I thought what I'd been doing was was what you might have called slightly new age anyway. It was almost as if you know I suddenly slotted into something that, and I I've been doing it for a while. Although I think that I'm not trying to be unkind to new age, new age was a lot of new age was more about a kind of flat plateau tableau of music to listen to to set up a mood and not change too much just right. kind of an, an appendage to your to your mood and scene nothing wrong with that at all whereas my stuff tends to fly around a little bit too much which is more proggy isn't it so sure. um so after although i got um, the benefit of a little bit of finance through that i decided to go for something which was much more 
um, um, well, I went to be more interesting than, than New Age. So that sounds that sounds conceited, but something that just had a little bit more musical diversity to it and change within it, you know. Um, so which is a bit more challenging. Not trying to be clever. So I think I like a lot of musicians. You know, I sort of I, I had the I had the chance to do an album. You look at the material you've got. You say, well, what material have I got? Let's see if we can put this together. And the idea of it being two, you know, one long instrumental, two sides wasn't immediately obvious. I just started writing sections and they seem to start flowing into each other and there was some sort of thematic kind of um, linking up and I, I didn't began to not see them as 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 just separate sections but as maybe one one piece because it's very challenging if you if you start doing that because you start to get ideas about development and um it's it's both very exciting and potentially quite bewildering obviously it's a bit like a novel, you know, you've got to know on page 800 is, uh, that, that it sort of makes sense all the way through on the way up to it, you know. Sure. And um, so uh, it's a bit risky, um, and there's all sorts of things I would have done again if I could have done, but it was a bit of a strange journey, really, because, I mean, I took the sort of best bits, if you like, that I had, wrote a fair few new ones, uh, with because the, the samples were just, well, samples had been out, but there weren't many samples available it was early days in that and the, the quality wasn't brilliant so i was using a few of those and some of those were, some of those are very very exciting and in fact they were samples that, so, some of them are since that i couldn't afford actually so <laughs> that was helpful um so it was a kind of a it was yes it was a sort of uh, musical journey without a road map if you like and i wasn't going on any set kind of path or format or form or anything so it was both exciting and, as I said, somewhat frightening, a little bit bewildering at times. How much was it difficult in recording something so long at, at, at that time when recording? I mean, recording had advanced to a, a pretty good point at that at that time, but it was, certainly wasn't what we have today with, with Pro Tools and, and, and being able to put everything on computer and map it all out. So was that – did that make it more difficult? Was it recorded in pieces or you had to – Yeah, know, way back from that I, I was way before computer it was about three three years before i had a computer or two sorry two years before i had a computer i think and um i used the sequencer a little bit for about two sections um maybe an arpeggiator but no effectively everything had to be played in and therefore you know if you made it nowadays you know you can keep the performance and i think it sometimes does make one a bit lazy with one's technique because you record something often too early when you're not quite ready right. and you spend three hours and doctoring it and perhaps lose a lot of the vibe but you know i mean in those days you know you can play a brilliant you do a brilliant take for the feel and the timing goes wrong at the end and that's it start again or, <laughs> right. or complicated drop in so yeah i mean it was it was it was kind of clawing your way slowly up the up the, uh, up the coal phase to be honest um i think i remember doing two minutes a week and thinking that was good and, and i remember telling somebody i did two minutes a week <laughs> they started laughing at me but what they didn't realize was how complicated that was because a lot of these sections were they were very complicated they had a lot of instruments yeah. and um again you know you couldn't cheat you couldn't cheat you, everything had to be played in perfectly and i wanted to make sure I did experiment a lot with the arrangement. That was the point. I didn't, I didn't sort of score the whole thing out with all the arrangement. I just had the basic chord sequences and the basic melodies and then uh, what's going to do them and what are we going to have on top. So there was a lot of trial and error with a lot of emphasis on error. <laughs> yeah, well, I can imagine. So then you were halfway through coming up with a new part that affected how you might go moving forward. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Sometimes, you know, you want to try different things. We didn't have the tracks to try different things. I ended up by syncing up two 16... It was actually two false text 16 tracks synced up together. And then later on, the decision was made. Didn't have, I didn't have a great deal of financial clout at that time to try and... Because um, I was going with the Jupiter 8 strings, which are lovely in their own way, but, you know, they are... They're kind of dreamy and, and mysterious, but they're not that authentic. And there are places where it needed ideally to sound a bit more authentic and so we did do a string section at cbs um augmenting adding it was rather bizarre um overdubbing strings real strings on synth strings and then afterwards trying to get a balance between the two it's just strange 
Uh, all, yeah, sure. The the um, the second disc that comes with this is is a bunch of demos and outtakes. So is that stuff that you had just been sitting on, or you you recently discovered? Well, I have, rather like I have a chat around to my website called Jonathan Dan, and he's like always called him my sonic sleuth. Whenever we do the issues, he try he noses around to try and find material that is of the time, is contemporary, is decent, and um, is actually worth a listen. I'll be honest, on this, there wasn't a lot. There have been other CDs, like on the private parts, where we've, you know, we've done now two or three of them, where we've had a private parts, an extra pieces CD, which has been a whole CD of, I would say, two-thirds often of decent unreleased material. Mm. Inevitably, a few remixes and various... But there wasn't a lot on this. Um, I think there were probably two or three different tracks, but the rest of it was just um, uh, different mixes. I mean, I think interesting, uh, interesting mixes, but there wasn't a, a vast amount of material. But I think enough to hopefully make it, people think it's about ten tracks. Uh, you know, it's quite an interesting collection. So I had known that you made a lot of records since uh, leaving Genesis. But preparing for the interview, looking back on, on some of the stuff, I had no idea how many exactly. It's it's quite a number. I mean, do, what's the number of albums that you've made since? Well, I don't know the full tally. I mean, there's there's six, there's about seven or eight sort of full scale ones. Then there's a lot. If you in sort of classical terms, there's the more sort of smaller smaller scale chamber ones. I mean, the private parts of pieces albums. There's twelve, eleven, twelve. Well, if you include the the extra one on each of the uh, with the, the uh, re-releases, it's probably up to about thirteen or fourteen. Then we did a series of, a series of um, music for TV ones, things that I've done for television. There's three or four of those called Missing Links. Yeah, um, right. Up around the thirty area, I think. Yeah, so you've been you've been pretty busy. And uh, yeah, are you still learning more instruments? How many instruments do you do you play now nowadays? I don't feel I play any instrument particularly well. <laughs> I'm more of a composer, so I, I, I can sound part. I can sound. I can sound reasonable on a lot of things if I practice enough. Twelve string is still my favourite, but uh, no, I mean I'm not really a, a you know one of these fantastic multi instrumentalists. Could suddenly start playing, you know, the underwater nose flute and that kind of stuff. <laughs> and I, I um, I'm basically guitar and piano, um, and um, you know a bad drummer. But I do have a fantastic collection of when I say guitars. I mean. I have the most. I have a wonderful, wonderful collection of all sorts of string instruments. Uh, I mean, no, no, I can't. I can't do any bowed ones. I, you know, I can't play cello or viola. But uh, I have. A, I, I love. I've been collecting a lot of ethnic ones, and um, you know, when you're doing certain music, they just add fantastic color. Are you familiar with the band Big Big Train? Oh, very much so. Yeah. Well, they did a cover of mine. Actually. Well, that's what I wanted to ask you about that because that yeah. is that's one of my favorite songs that they've done actually, and I didn't know that it was originally one of yours, and I you know discovered it through that. I always wondered if you had heard their version. I did, and I thought it was very, very good. Fun enough, that song was written exactly at the same during the same when I left Genesis because the last eight months of Genesis, none of us really wrote anything. We were just stuck on the road. We were dog tired. Um, and we got our set. We didn't really have any time to. I think we did one new, one new piece in that whole first part of 1970. Because when it came to do the album, we just recorded what was what was the live set because there wasn't time to rehearse new, new material. And also the record company liked what they'd heard, and we wouldn't have taken the chance. So, but when I left, I mean, it all came splurging out. And I wrote Master of Time at the same time as I wrote God. If I saw her now, which way the wind blows, and, and, and other things that were on. Um, Geese of the Ghost and the early albums, but yes, I mean I was eighteen when I wrote that. Oh my God, that is that's a tremendous song. They they're the closest band today that reminds me of sort of the classic Genesis style. I don't know if you if you see that a little bit. Yeah, they they are. They're very very nice guys too, actually. Very nice guys. That's great. Um, just a, a little bit looking back on on your time with Genesis. Is, is there a song from that time that that you still sort of look back and go, "That's that's a, one of my favorite ones that I that I wrote or worked on at, at back then"? Not really. Um, I think that um, I mean the first album was more fun, to be honest, because we were just schoolboys doing it in the holidays. Yeah. But I don't think I'd look back on anything on that as being particularly distinguished of the ones that I wrote. Um, there's a couple that Pete and Tony wrote, I think, that are nicer. Um, and also that got a, a, got a bit savaged in the production um, 
which is a long story, obviously, uh, partly through indigence, but part, partly through, <laughs> in my opinion, a wrong decision by Jonathan King. But on the second album, which was obviously after slung it away on the road, I mean, the music is much more polished, yeah. but it was one became very, we were very jaded by that, by that stage. I mean, I was, it, I hope it doesn't come across on the record. I think probably the most original. I mean, they were all great fun when we first wrote them, but we had to keep playing them over and over and over and over again. Because by the time it comes to, the, to recording the album, you, no, you're not inspired by this music at all. You've done it too many times. Um, mm-hmm. But I would think that Stagnation would probably be the one I would put my finger on in terms of being sure. um, groundbreaking or rather setting up a kind of a template for things that came later with uh yeah the musical box i guess you is that that came from something that you had written right how much how much of that is st- is still in the version that ended up being being the song not a lot i mean it was mike's piece it was mike's piece to start with um mike's sequence the the, the introduction chords were his and then it, it, the introduction few chords were his entirely he discovered this tuning which is called f-sharp tuning and um, the first part of the sequence where we both play together was his, but then we rattled off uh, the next part sort of in tandem, really. I mean, I've never really analysed how much is in the final piece. I, I think it's a, it's a fair chunk at the beginning, but obviously not, not yeah. once it gets going. So are you uh, currently writing anything new uh, for any new material uh, these days, or what are you working on? Well, I tend to I tend to do uh, 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 <clears throat> quite a lot of different things. I mean, I make um, I make my living um, um, <clears throat> as much by doing TV library music. I mean, you were saying I've been prolific with my albums, which is over thirty. But I've done getting on for a thousand pieces of library music. As oh well. my goodness! <laughs> Not to mention lots of, lots of scores as well. I mean, I've got I've got a, I've got a, a filing cabinet full of loads of piano pieces, piano pieces and orchestral pieces. So, Yes, no, I'm, I, was, I was busier. I'm a, bit, I'm a little bit slower now as you get older. But uh, um, So what am I doing at the moment? I'm doing, yes, I'm always involved in library music, doing all sorts of different projects. We're doing a thing at the moment which is um, sort of strings and ethnic instruments, guitars and stuff. Um, I'm doing another thing which is much more sort of synthy atmospheric for kind of documentaries. Um, I'm toying with... Uh, mucking about with ideas for a new private parts and pieces um solo album uh, acoustic guitar stuff but on lots of different instruments uh, not just you know the conventional guitar i've got a, a a um what's called a harp guitar which has six normal strings and then at the bottom it has six sympathetic bass ones and it has my math isn't very good here six 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 uh, <laughs> eleven eleven at the top high ones because it's got 21 strings oh wow and I've had a 16-string made for me, which is a 12-string, but with, with, with a pair lower and a pair higher. So I'm hoping to be able to do that sometime later in the year. Um, so there's that. Um, we've been doing all the research and, and remixing for the release of Invisible Men, which was a, and that was one of the very sort of poppy albums that was... If I, if I say it was forced on me, it wasn't entirely so, but there was a big pressure on trying to, on trying to have a hit record in the 80s and... Well, that said, I had a mortgage, so um, it, was, it was quite a pressure time. So um, we've managed to find virtually a whole CD of unreleased material, um, which is good on that. So, yes, I'm supervising the, um, the re-releases um, and also doing quite a lot of songwriting as well and, t- and trying to build up material for a, um, a solo album at some stage in the future. Not quite sure which way it's going to go, really. Um, some people are saying make it like the geese the ghosts have a couple of songs a lot of instrumentals um so uh, yeah i mean working on all sorts of material really i, I was recently involved in doing some music for a, a a cd with a lot of other artists for an elephant charity as well i did a trap with steve hackett in fact yeah well i want to ask you about about that a little bit have you had a chance to see one of the the shows where he's he's doing the the, the genesis stuff um, I've seen Steve in, in concert, but not since he's done the... I mean, I've seen him do Genesis stuff. I haven't seen the more recent shows where he's been doing a lot of Genesis stuff. Right. But um, Steve has become a very close friend of mine, and we, we see each other quite a lot and exchange stories and have, have some very, very uh, lovely nights out, actually. Oh, that's really cool to hear. I love that. Um, 
Well, cool, man. Listen, uh, uh, Anthony, this is, uh, or Ant, uh, I should call you. Uh, this has been a pleasure, really an honor to speak with you. And I'm, uh, it's great to hear you have so much going on. I don't know how you keep up with it all. Absolute pleasure for me too. Really great to talk to you. And thanks so much for caring. All right, buddy. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye. Thanks to Anthony for the interview. For more information on Anthony Phillips, please visit anthonyphillips.co.uk. His latest release, Slow Dance, is available now. For upcoming news and interviews, please check theprogreport.com. Follow us on Facebook, at The Prog Report on Twitter, or download the podcast on iTunes. Thanks.